Yep. Yep. Yes, sir. It's no creeping over here, baby. Ah, let's go. Am I loving it? Am I loving it already? <laughs> Rogue defender drone detected. Okay, so I've come to the conclusion <laughs> that pulse resistance is the most relevant thing in this patch. That's all you see in PvP. And I'm going to tell you something. If you want to succeed in PvP and you do not have pulse resistance on, or if you're not wearing a heartbreaker, then it's going to be a problem. I mean, look at these people. They all have heartbreaker or or tanky or, or whatever you know you're always going to be getting pulsed and this is for the pvpers this build that i'm making for you is going to be two part i'm going to make one that's for pve and one that's for pvp and i just can't with sound body and mind and heart come into conflict without pulse resistance because you just at a total disadvantage if you get pulsed you're spotted you're taking way more damage it just makes sense to have it so I'm still going to be pushing out the builds, but now when I push out the builds, it's going to be like, okay, this is good for PvE because, of course, boss resistance isn't as important in PvE, but I got to have it for PvP, man. I just got to. Neutral I mean, I tried this build before you run out of with the Dread Edict, you know, with uh, Aces. And actually, let me show you right now before we get into this. Yeah, yeah, I'll just go all crit and then... Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Right. Because getting a jump on people is most Ooh, bro, I just melted the crap out of this dude. You're the only one left on your team agents. Keep fighting. And this is what happened. You know, I had some good kills. I was getting some good bodies. But I kept getting pulsed. So, I'm going to show you it this way. Alright, so. I need to be inconspicuous. I don't need nobody seeing me. Yup. Yup. Yes, sir. It's no creeping over here, baby. Let's go. Am I loving it? Am I loving it already? <laughs> Rogue defender drone detected. Oh yeah, you getting body too. Yes sir. Yes sir. Let's go. <laughs> this build is certified to the max already. I don't even need to say nothing. Look at all those technician specializations up there, bro. Every single one of them. I'm going to tell you why this build is special in a second, but my, my heart is pumping right now, bro. <laughs> you see how they did not even see me as I was creeping up on them, like right next to them. Yes, sir. Sorry. Oh, you don't see me, do you? Don't try it. Please don't try to come up here. You do as a wrap. Listen, when I first used the Dread Edict and the PTS, I said to myself, this is gonna be a problem. And I knew that everyone and their mothers would be using this weapon with aces and eights. Well, I agree with using the Dread Edict with aces, but only for PVE. This weapon requires more than just that if you wanna play other than PVE, like the Dark Zone or Conflict. So this build description will be a two-part explanation, one for PvE and the other for PvP, because this exotic marksman rifle deserves to be explained to you in all of its glory. The weapon is just too good. Now before we get into it, can you like the video and subscribe to my channel for builds from DPS all the way to skill? Okay, let's dive right into it.
first I need to express to all of you, and I know it may be annoying hearing this again, but trust me, I won't be as adamant as I am about this now, but it's the importance of pause resistance in this patch. If you enjoy PVP, if you like to farm the DZ, if you just don't like being paused in general, then this is the formula you want to utilize. Everyone is talking about how Heartbreaker DPS build is a meta. Well, this is the meta too, because you will not see me in PVP without pulse resistance if I'm using a DPS build. It's just not gonna happen. Did you see how in the gameplay, nobody suspected me or didn't expect to see me popping up right in front of their faces around those corners? Well, that's because when you're immune to pulse, your character to the enemy looks like their teammates. And as soon as they realize that it's too late, now I'm about to explain to you this version first because it's getting me really hype right now. I'll tell you about the PVE version afterwards and there are timestamps in the description if you wanna skip to it. But here's the formula. Three piece y'all, which by the way, you can now farm in countdown from hunters if you don't want to farm the DZ. Very convenient for you PVEers. And this time I'm using a holster, backpack, and gloves. The bonuses are has pro weapon damage and pulse resistance. All the y'all pieces have headshot damage rolled except the backpack and its talent is vigilance. The absolute best talent for this playstyle. Because with me being undetectable, vigilance will always be to my advantage. On top of that, my chest piece is sacrifice. I don't feel like I'm sacrificing anything honestly, just dishing out pure damage. Sacrifice is a named Providence chest piece with a 15% headshot damage bonus for the first piece and the perfect glass cannon talent, which amplifies all damage you dish out by 30%. It's called sacrifice, but it's called the sacrifice because you also take 60% amplified. I wouldn't worry about that though. For the mask, I'm using Punch Drunk, the named mask for 20% more headshot damage. I've always loved this. It's awesome for pistol builds too, but for this build, it works like a charm. Now, if you notice for every piece, including the Araldi knee pads for 10% marksman rifle damage, I have for the attribute rolled alongside it weapon handling. This is very important. You want as much damage as possible, but you also need to be able to hit your shots. Weapon handling increases stability, accuracy, everything that'll help you beam your target. And you especially need it for the Dread Edict the new exotic marksman rifle that makes me feel like I'm using Deadeye from Division 1. The Dread Edict comes with damage to targets out of cover for its attribute, which is amazing. And the scope is a 40% headshot damage scope. I think that's the same as what the Sharpshooter Specialization gives you for its exclusive skill tree perk. But the talent is called Full Stop. Shooting enemies build stacks to a cap of 20. Headshots grant two stacks. Each stack grants 2% weapon damage and 5% headshot damage. On reload, it clears all stacks and you gain 5% of your max armor as temporary armor for 10 seconds for each stack removed. And this is why it's important to have the armor that I have at like 1.2 million armor because it's based off of your armor. And y'all already comes as an armor core, so you're good to go with that. And once you get a headshot kill with the Dread Edict, it restores all bullets in your magazine. And this does not count as a reload, which means none of your ammo is removed. That's why it's so good in PvE. This talent is insane because it stacks your damage higher and higher the more you land headshots. It stacks body and headshot damage, but you're rewarded more for headshots. That's why having a build like this while not being seen will undoubtedly give the opposition zero chance to react after you get the jump on them. And one thing I like to say about when reloading, using a marksman rifle can be daunting, it can be intimidating when fighting against someone using an assault rifle, for example. So with the bonus armor you get from reloading with Dread Edict gives you a little room to make mistakes while offering you survivability when you reload. I think that's pretty cool. Now, even if you're spotted and you got to fight straight up, my secondary has your back. It's the Tsunami with perfect pummel. Two consecutive kills with this and it refills your magazine and grants 40% weapon damage. I'd say this is better in PVE because you can get more PVE kills back to back, but it still slaps in PVP because this shotgun archetype has a small reticle, therefore the bullet spread is tight. Meaning headshots with this will deal significantly more damage to them without the pummel talent even activated. And if it is activated, well, that's just a bonus. Now let me explain the PVE version of this build. The skills are the same for both, so I'll talk about those at the end. I look at this as a support DPS build more than anything because I have a four piece aces and you all know what it does. It flips a card when landing a shot with a marksman rifle. After five cards are flipped, the damage of your next shot is amplified by 30% and the more shots are enhanced, the better the hand. Now I think this was changed because before the different hands you got would grant bonuses for you and your team like bonus armor and ammo refills, right? Now it looks to be just about increasing the damage for yourself. This setup is really great for PVE because I have Soya's exotic knee pads, which stack my damage so long as I'm stationary and I can't be staggered either. And in PVE, I personally don't move around a lot. So this setup is just right. Speaking of the setup, it's actually what the backpack is called. The new name backpack that came with TU15. 
perfectly opportunistic. Amazing for team play and support because enemies you hit take 15% more damage from all sources. So this means that anyone that I shoot will be highlighted with this talent logo, letting everyone around know that he's gonna receive 15% more damage if they shoot him or hit him with a skill because it says all damage received. Plus it works perfectly with my weapon setup because it says using a marksman rifle or shotgun only works. Now let me tell you about the skills and I think this is one that's slept on for real, the Achilles pulse. It targets a single enemy with a pulse, which identifies weaknesses, highlights them and causes damage to those areas to take headshot damage. This is absolutely insane. If you look at the stats, I have 273% headshot damage, which they will take to whatever weakness is highlighted. You can use whatever you want for the second skill, but I went with the decoy. I fell in love with this build from the first time I played with it. That conflict match that you saw was the first one I played, and I immediately felt the build's power. I think it's mainly due to this being such a hard counter to the current meta. Maybe that's what's getting me so hyped. Anyways, that's pretty much it for this double feature. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, smash that like button and subscribe to my channel. Oh, and before I forget, we are so close to 1,000 subscribers over at the Identity Games YouTube channel. Once we reach my goal, I'll be doing an awesome special video reveal along with giveaways and all kind of crazy stuff. It's about to be nuts. So head over there and show some love too. I'll see you in my next video. Be right out.